Dear family of God, it's so good to be with you as we continue our study of the Westminster Shorter Catechism. We are in that part of the Catechism that is dealing with the Ten Commandments. In the second half of the Ten Commandments, it's really highlighting how God wants us to enjoy relationships with one another. Today, we're in the middle of the three questions that highlight the Ninth Commandment. The Ninth Commandment is, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Question 77, our question for today, ask, what is required in the Ninth Commandment? And the answer is, the Ninth Commandment requires the maintaining and promoting of truth between man and man and of our own and our neighbor's good name, especially in witness bearing. The proof text comes from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. We realize in this question and answer, there's so much dependent on truth and being trustworthy and on taming the tongue. No, God values our honesty. He calls his people to live honest lives. Here we have a command about being honest concerning the actions and character of our neighbors. The command was given to remind God's people of the seriousness of charging a brother or sister of doing wrong. But it is also a reminder of the value that God places on truth. Truth, trust, uh, trust, uh, truthfulness, and honesty, after all, they're all part of the very core of who God is. Jesus Christ said of himself that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So bearing false witness against your neighbor does not only harm your neighbor, it does damage to the reputation of God himself. Because as God's people, we are called to live in a way that bears testimony to the character and to the nature of a trustworthy and true God. Notice again that we are called to protect the name of our neighbor. A good name means that we strive to protect a godly reputation, a reputation that, has, that demonstrates the love and beauty of our God. Now, the command calls us to guard our own reputation, and beyond that, it also causes us to protect the reputation of our neighbors. There are lots of ways of damaging our neighbor's reputation, whether we gossip, whether we pass on bits of news uh, that we ourselves cannot verify as true, or by flat out making up false accusations about another person. All of these things hurt and damage our neighbor that we are called rather to love. And family, again, not only do these things damage another person's reputation, but they also damage our own. And in doing so, they damage our good Christian witness to the character and nature of God. Now, this does remind me of James chapter 3, where there is a call to tame the tongue. And yet James reminds us in James chapter 3, verse 8, that no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, the, we bless our Lord and our Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. So from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, James tells us, these things ought not be so. You know, our only hope is to look to Jesus Christ in the gospel, to allow the redemption that he provides for all who trust in him for salvation to set us free so that we would be able to love God and our neighbors. And since love rejoices with the true truth, the Holy Spirit brings the truth, the gospel from our changed hearts to our transformed minds and out of our mouths in words that encourage one another. With transformed hearts, the Spirit convicts us of sin when we bear false witness against our neighbor. When we lie or gossip about our brother, we want the Spirit to quickly silence us so that we may testify of God and His love. Dear family, the gospel always calls us to a better way. When we orient ourselves around the finished work of Christ, we are compelled to bear true witness about God. We bear true witness to God when we seek our neighbor's blessing. We serve him, we sacrifice for him. If our brother requires correction, we speak the truth in love, we restore him gently, and we seek not to shame him, but rather to build him up. The very one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, he is the one 
that then receives all the glory. And then we are encouraged and our reputation is protected for our neighbor's good to the glory of his name. Dear family, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are true, that we have a Savior who is the way, the truth, and the life. We praise you and thank you for the call uh, to maintain our own good reputation and also to protect the reputation of our neighbor. We pray that you would help us, O Lord, as we focus on the very one who sets us free to proclaim such good news. O Father, encourage us day by day to be the people of God that you call us to be in loving ourselves and in loving you and in loving our neighbor. It's in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Dear family of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.